Hi Math 1 students, picking back up with our literal equation remediation video. This is part 2. Uh, looking at some more complicated problems, uh, let's take a look at the back of uh, number 13 here. We're trying to solve for x. Uh, this is a problem that you're going to be doing in module 5 quite a bit. Generally you're going to solve for y instead of x, but it's the same idea. Uh, look, when we're looking at x, there's a 4 there. 4 is multiplied to x, and then we have that minus y equals 9. Generally, what we're going to do is, you know, eliminate the addition or the subtraction. And here we just have a 9 plus y. Uh, that leaves us on the left side with 4 multiplied to x. Uh, but, of course, we want to get x alone. We want to get rid of that 4. 4 is being multiplied to x, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. We can divide this entire side right here. Look at our answer. We're going to see this quite a bit. You've got this big fraction. You've got 9 plus y up on top. Down below, you're dividing by 4. Let's take a look at a very similar question, number 14. As we're looking at, say, problem number 14, trying to get y alone. 2 is multiplied to y, but 4x is actually added to it. And that 4x, by the way, of course, is a positive. That's why we're going to subtract a 4x from both sides you're going to get rid of that term that was being added. You'll just have a 2 times y remaining. Now the 10 and the minus 4x, they are not like terms. You cannot turn that into a 6 or a 6x. Uh, you just leave it as 10 minus 4x. But of course we need to get y alone and 2 is being multiplied to y, so we have to do the opposite of multiplying by 2, which is dividing by 2. Now, guys, it's uh, going to have an answer of 10 minus 4x all over 2. Tell you what, even if you leave this answer here, technically we could reduce, we could simplify, but this is good enough for a general solution. You could just leave it as 10 minus 4x all over a 2. Let's take a look at number 15. Solving for b. As we're trying to get b alone, look at that right side. b is actually being multiplied to w. And that's because b is right next to w. Anytime a number in a variable or two variables are right next to each other, uh, the math involved is multiplication. They rarely will show that multiplication uh, dot there, but it's there. Uh, so to get b alone, I have to get rid of that multiplication of w. What is the opposite of multiplying by w? What is that inverse operation? Well, dividing by w. Your final answer is just m all over w, m divided by w. Let's take a look at number 16. As we look at number 16, and we're not going to do every single one of these problems, but I do want to do enough to help you. Uh, when we're looking at number 16, though, what a different problem this is. There are four different variables. There's an A, an X, an F, and an N. And uh, we don't even see a single number, a single numeral anywhere. Well, it's very much like what we saw on the front page. You know, when you have A multiplied to X, you also have that plus F. Get rid of the addition or subtraction next to the x. That's getting rid of an addition of f. The opposite operation, the inverse operation, is subtraction of f. Now, this right-hand side is just n 
minus f. And then what? Well, we're closer to having our x alone. Uh, but a is being multiplied to it. Again, any time a number and a variable or two variables are right next to each other, like a and x are, there's a multiplication symbol between them. Well, how do I get rid of this a? Well, a is being multiplied to x. We will just have to divide by a to do that. So uh, your right-hand side is just n minus f all over an a. As we look at uh, number 17, number 17, guys, we are asked to get y alone, but we have this bx plus m times y equals d. This bx is connected through addition, and of course, if you just have the bx right there, it's you know showing up to be a positive bx. You want to get rid of that bx, and that inverse operation of adding bx is subtracting bx. So I'm going to have m times y left on uh, this left-hand side. Here, I'll have d subtract bx. And uh, it's better. The left-hand side is closer to having y alone. We have m multiplied to y. And I want to get rid of that m. So the inverse operation of m multiplied to something would be to divide both sides by m. And your final answer can look rather complicated, but it's just d minus bx all over m. So as we get to uh, these last problems, maybe we'll just do two more for the sake of time. Uh, as we're looking at number 18, a uh, great problem to, to focus on. Once again, plenty of variables. There are three of them. What's a little bit different is you can have a 2 and a 10. You can see mixing of numbers and variables. Uh, but look at that left-hand side. It's very complicated. You have a 2x minus f all over a b. The very last step setting this up would have been dividing by b. And uh, if we're going to undo this equation to get a variable alone, if we're going to do inverse operations, we've got to do the inverse of what was last put together there, and that's that b. So the opposite of dividing by b is multiplying by b. That's the inverse operation. We will have 2x minus f, and right here we'll have a 10b. Well, things are looking better, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, on the left-hand side right now, we have 2x minus f. Uh, there are two things happening to x. x is being multiplied by 2, but it's also being uh, subtracted by f. Remember, you want to deal with that uh, addition or subtraction and doing the inverse operation. Minus f, as you're looking at that, you could say, well, what's the opposite of subtracting f? Well, we can add an f. Now, we're not done, but the right-hand side, we cannot combine like terms. We can't simplify that. Uh, it's just going to be 10b plus an f. We're one step away, however. Uh, when we're looking right here, 2 times x, uh, we just want to see the x. We want to uh, get rid of that multiplication of 2. The inverse operation of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. So your final answer will be this 10b plus f, and then you divide by 2. All right, well, 
We've got uh, really some time for perhaps uh, just maybe one more problem. Uh, maybe we could take a look at uh, number 20, perhaps. That looks rather complicated with those parentheses, don't they? Uh, and there are a couple of methods you could do uh, to solve this. And this is why I wanted to end with problem 20. Uh, there are two ways that you could do it. Uh, I'm going to label it method 1, and I'm going to label it method 2. The answers are going to look amazingly close, but different. Um, you know, and, and I think because the, the answers can look different at times, I, I think people might wonder if both of them are correct. They actually are. Um, here's method 1, and uh, it's the method that I'd really like to have you guys do. Um, you know, it, it's a shortcut. It's a little bit simpler. And, and I really like to help kids do things in the easiest way possible. There's an X out in front here. And that X is being multiplied. Even though I could distribute that X. And by the way, that's what we'll do in method 2. You could say, you know what? Let's instead, when an x is out in front, how about we just divide both sides by x? Now, of course, the golden rule of algebra is more or less saying what you do to one side, you'll do to the other. And uh, my goodness, once you do that, you're going to really be in good shape. You can see you've got a plus b equals k over x. But your a is not alone, is it? Uh, you can see that you want to get rid of that B. That's a plus B, so you could minus a B right here. And uh, your final answer would be K over X, subtract a B. That can look rather weird, but that is, in fact, what you have. Now, method two I'm going to do over here. Actually, a lot of kids want to do method two, and that's okay. Many kids are going to say, look, I know from so long ago that when you see a number or a variable outside of parentheses, I want to distribute. X gets multiplied to A, and then say plus X gets multiplied to B. And, and kids will say, can I not do that? Can't I just, uh, you know, get away with that? And actually, you can you certainly can. That's definitely allowed. Well, now what? Well, you know, our a is being multiplied by x, but we also have this addition of xb. So I'm going to subtract an xb. On the left, I'll have x times a. Over here, I'll have k minus xb. And we're just one little baby step away. I think you can see where we're going. A is not by itself. It's being multiplied by X. So you want to get rid of that X. X is multiplied. The inverse operation is division. So your final answer then is K minus XB all over an X. Now, again, these Problems do look pretty close with their answers at the end. Both of them have a division of x, both of them have a k, both of them have a b. Uh, but that second answer, it, it does look quite a bit different. You can wonder if, if it's really the same. It is. It, it really is. Um, you know, both answers would earn you full credit. Uh, but sometimes kids look at this and they'll say, this is still bugging me. How could this second answer that you just came up with, how could it be the same? Look, either answer is going to get you full credit, like I said, but you might remember what we did back in Module 3 even. We were taking two terms up on top, and we could say, look, k, this part of the numerator, is all over x, and then right here, our second part, we could say minus, we'd have x b all over an x, and uh, remember, you could always do that. You could separate the two terms in the numerator, 
But then look, these X's would cancel out. You would get the same thing. I guess I just want to make absolutely sure that you guys know that it's okay to have either answer. They are the same. So if method one makes plenty of sense to you, use that. If method two is more comfortable for you, please use that one. Use whatever uh, you uh, feel most comfortable with.